Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now over the last few months I've made a number of videos about the Russian agricultural sector and how Russia's not only self-sufficient in food production, it's now a major exporter. Now the areas I covered before were about land-based food production, grains, wheats, and also into livestock like cattle, pigs, and poultry. So today I'm going to talk about Russia's harvest of the seas. I know most of you are aware that Russia is the largest country in the world that has coastline on 12 seas and access to three oceans. It's connected to the Atlantic Ocean through the Baltic Sea in the west, and it has the Black and Caspian Seas in the south also has the Arctic Ocean and other seas including the White, the Barents, the Karen, the Laptev and the East Siberian Seas in the north and the Pacific Ocean, the Bering, Ohotsk and Japanese Seas are in the east. Now fish plays a very important part in the Russian diet and they eat a large amount of fish from the seas, the rivers and the lakes from the famous Caspian sturgeon to the Pacific salmon onto the Barents Sea cod, there are so many species that are eaten in the country and every provincial supermarket has a serious amount of fish on display, in fact we'd embarrass Harrods and even live fish with lobsters and crayfish in tanks. Now for years the Russian fishing industry has been in the doldrums but new plans by the Russian government plans to revitalize the industry as part of its feed the nation import substitution policy. A new agreement on the construction of fishing vessels was concluded during the latest economic forum in Vladivostok. Now this represents another significant step in the large scale renewal of the Russian fishing fleet and that's despite the challenges posed by sanctions and the difficulties faced by domestic shipbuilding. Now the developments are significant not only for the fishing and shipbuilding industries but for the country's overall food sovereignty. Now on September the 5th this crab fishing vessel Sergei Prohodko commenced its inaugural voyage. Now this crab fishing vessel departed from the outfitting quay at the shipyard in Rybinsk embarking on its journey to its home port of Vladivostok. Now the vessel was constructed under investment quotas and crab auctions program. Now this is known as the quota under the keel system. Now this initiative was designed to develop domestic fishing infrastructure including the construction of fishing vessels. Now before I continue I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos you can help me fund my channel and my website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the screen. Now everybody who donates gets a personal thank you from me and I'm thanking you all who are watching now anyway. Now the keel quota mechanism has enabled the country to attract a total of 270 billion rubles of investment according to Ilya Shestakov who's head of the Federal Agency for Fisheries. Now these are quite substantial investments, that's about 2.7 billion dollars and that extends beyond the construction of processing plants and shipbuilding. They encompass the advancement of the growth of ship repair and the development of the supporting industries of the fishing industry. Now you're asking what are keel quotas and how do they contribute to the revitalization of the domestic fishing fleet? And what is their impact on the country's food sovereignty? Well, if you want to increase your catch, the most effective solution is to construct a new boat. Now, around, around a decade ago, the industry was facing significant challenges. Uh, costs for fishing were rising and fish and seafood were becoming increasingly inaccessible to the population. Plus there were problems with sanitary standards and the consumption of marine protein and food security in general. And the government felt that the country's food sovereignty was being compromised. In response to these challenges, the government took a series of measures that started in the mid-2010s to demote domestic fisheries and the broader fishers industry at large, including shipbuilding. I mean, by the early 90s and when the Soviet Union broke up, it had the largest fishing fleet in the world. 
120 different types of vessels and they encompassed everything from giant super trawlers and floating factory bases for ocean fishing, right down to small fishing boats for coastal uh, trawling. Now in the 19 year period between 1971 and 1990, the fishing fleet launched over 2000 new vessels and they were all built at domestic facilities. But you've got to remember at that time, the large tonnage fleet uh, engines was actually sourced abroad, mainly from Finland and Germany. Now that situation has now changed. Now the fishing industry has undergone, undergone in Russia a period of growth and development since the dissolution of the Soviet Union. I mean, the time the fleet is being re, uh, renewed now uh, with the support of the state by credits. Now, Vasilevsky Zelano, who's a former deputy minister of fisheries in the USSR, he says to this day, 90% of the fish caught is used and caught by uh, capacities as in trawlers that were built back in the time of the Soviet Union. Now, following the dissolution of the Soviet Union, they basically they stopped building new vessels. I mean, fishing companies just purchased vessels at auctions that had been confiscated from the Japanese or Taiwanese poachers in Russian waters and just repaired or uh, upgraded them. So the fleet was basically coming to the end of its life. I mean, the standard service life for a Russian trawler or any trawler for that matter is 24 years. And the current average age of Russia at the moment is 30 to 35. Now this has led to a significant decline in their efficiency and productivity. As a result, fish and seafood uh, catches have declined. The large capacity processing trawlers had to cease operations and the majority were sold for scrap. Now, of course, the new strategy for the development of the shipbuilding industry until 2035 uh, has now been approved. And it contains major plans for the renewal of the fishing fleet with the objective of building 1,640 fishing vessels by 2035. I mean, the major objective of this is to foster a competitive uh, production and address import substitution challenges. More importantly, the ch strategy complements and expands the practice of updating their fishing fleet with the help of investment quotas, or as we mentioned them, keel quotas that were introduced in 2017. Now, the investment quotas can strike the principal for source of financing for the new fleet. In summary, the process is followed. Based on the states of the fish stock, scientists determine the a total allowable catch, that's the amount of fish they can catch, and then they distribute them between the companies. The portion of the total allowable catch is allocated to those who invest the profits in the construction of new ships at domestic shipyards and into coastal fish processing plants. Now the proceeds from the sale of these quotas must be directed towards shipbuilding and fish processing. Now this objective is to utilise Russia's bioresources in the most efficient manner. Now this encompasses profits for the businesses, the state gets its taxes and the people get good quality fish. Now it's also worth noting that fishermen are playing an instrumental role in the revival of the domestic shipbuilding industry. I mean, at the time the decision was made to uh, take on investment quotas, the fleet was outdated. And as we said, that was around 30 years. Now, the fleet is not conducive to efficient uh, fishing for both the fishermen and the uh, deep processing uh, of fish. They were losing uh, 20 to 30 percent of the catch because they needed uh, to improve the uh, technology and invest in modernization of their ships. Now, the reasons behind the introduction of the quotas under the keel, while not without flaws, is an effective means of encouraging investment into the fleet renewal. I mean, Vladimir Putin uh, participated in the flag raising ceremony for five new fishing vessels that were built under the keel program at domestic shipyards. So that shows that he's taking an active interest and he says his key priorities <coughs> for the industry, which directly impact the country's economic and technological sovereignty. First and foremost, he says, our objective is to develop our own production and resource base, 
which will lead to the fulfillment of the domestic market with a wide range of high quality fish and seafood. It's important to increase the shape of the processing of them with the aim of achieving a notable presence also once we domestic markets covered in exports. This will result in additional income and the creation of new jobs in Russia rather than overseas. In this regard, another key objective is to reduce relying on foreign technologies and components and services. According to uh, Vladimir Putin, they're going to develop these companies at home and conduct promising research and development and streamline the process from concept to production. Naturally, one of our principal objectives is the modernization of the fleet, the construction of cutting edge, well equipped, reliable vessels for fishing companies. So uh, there you have it. The future looks pretty good for the, the Russian fishing industry. Uh, it's now in its uh, new stages. It's developing fast and it has over uh, 100 uh, billion rubles allocated. Its catches are now up to over 5.2 uh, million tons and that's more than enough to feed and enough for exports. Anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to uh, talking to you again. Please like and subscribe and uh, do use the comment section. If you want to uh, contribute, please uh, click on the thanks button. Thank you and I'll see you all again soon.